As an independent creative, I always hoped my job would look something like this. He's having sex with my girlfriend, I don't care, I'm a writer. Or this. This is my exercise lobby, where I train every single muscle in my body, including my soul. In reality, it doesn't actually look like I'm working most of the time. There's a lot of sitting and thinking. It's misleading, but behind this fleshy and vacant facade, there is a fierce intelligence at work. I don't think there's any real science to creativity, but there are two things I know for sure. One, setting aside time each day, and it works best when you do it every day, is imperative. And two, take a lot of breaks. It's like with music, the rest are just as important as the notes. You're trying to create a harmony of mind so you can compose the most beautiful of thoughts. I found taking naps to be a strangely creative experience. There's something about the chemistry in your brain that changes in that lull just before sleep, so that your thoughts take on quite a dreamlike quality. Granted, not everything is going to be golden. It's a bit like writing drunk, it can be hard to recapture your intoxicated vision. Also, without a boss, there is always the risk that what you thought was going to be a 10 minute shut eye develops into a full sleep cycle, leaving you a bit disorientated. There's no such thing as French windows. Oh. If you feel bad taking naps, I find it helps to think of them more as siestas. Though I probably take more siestas than your average Spaniard. You've got your after lunch siesta, which often runs into your before dinner siesta. Your mid yoga siesta, your accidental stair siesta, and you're waiting for the post-siesta. I've never actually been fishing, but I imagine the creative process is somewhat similar. You're not going to catch anything if you don't turn up. Also, you're a lot more likely to catch salmon if you're fishing for salmon. Though sometimes you won't catch any salmon, just a fuck ton of minnows. And then there'll be times when you've packed up all your shit, and you're just walking along the riverbank, and then you see one of these babies that's really damaging to the local ecology, and you pull it up, and attached is a really great idea. And a dolphin. Hi, I'm a dolphin. And the dolphin's all. Could you stop throwing these in the river, please? You killed so many of my family that I've forgotten how to cry. Aren't you a bit thin for a dolphin? You should not be getting caught in them. I'm not thin, I'm malnourished because you took all the fucking minnows. Oh, Finn, where would I be without you? I don't know. Well, my life would have less purpose, eh? Fuck you, I'm a dolphin. One of the greatest enemies of creativity is distraction. Chief among this, the internet. Facebook, I think, is one of the worst culprits of all. Nothing of value has ever been said on Facebook. And I think it's kind of evil in that it stimulates you just enough to keep on looking, but it never leaves you feeling anything but hollowed out. The most worrying thing about these internet distractions, though, is that it's left us all with an incredibly short... Kieran, could we finish up the take? Could we... Can we do something that's... Now can you come back please? I just want to finish this. That's the garden. That's not where we're filming. No, that's fine. We'll do it tomorrow. That's... Yep. Okay, bye. Why not? Yeah. Let's groove. Yeah, let's groove. Distracted.